Hello, everybody. Happy Star Trek Tuesday. Wow, what a wild week we've got so far. That was a lot of W's. First of all, is there going to be an original series alien in the Section 31 series? So right now, there's somebody going, you mean like humans and Klingons and Vulcans? Maybe. Or maybe something even way way more obscure um so that's in the news something very interesting there also is whoopi goldberg gonna be in a star trek movie is that <laughs> is that possible i mean sounds like it might be and, you know, a whole bunch of other interesting things. You know, we've got a really interesting discovery preview, too, because there's lots of buzz going on there. Uh, Scotty is pretty zany. Everybody knows Scotty in Strange New Worlds. And uh, Lower Decks is no longer not renewed. It's back, everybody. I'm just predicting the future. If we keep thinking this... <laughs> It's going to happen. Slower decks, slower decks. <laughs> also, everybody, what a prize. What a treat. JJ Lendl is here. Hey, that's me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Don't you Yay. have something for me? Do I have something for you? I, I think I do. so. Hmm. It, it, I know that you are uh, a fan of, is it John Luck? How do you pronounce it? Gene Luck Pickard. Gene Luck Pickard. <laughs> In his, uh, I know you really love when he uh, changes his fashion up. So I have this this very rare tapestry Picard figure here. Whoa! Um, Whoa! Where did you familiar. get that? And so I thought, would would you be interested in in this? Would I? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thanks, man. Look at this oh, guy. I, wow. I added a string to him. Oh, yeah. He floats around. <laughs> You're fast. You know, that way you can you yank him right back. Accessories? This is oh, unbelievable, really cool. you guys. Wow. The only the only thing I ask is that you like pay something forward, Ryan. Like you know, right, but I can't re-gift. I can't yeah. re-gift, am I right? Mm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No, you <laughs> hang on to that, but you know. Um you well I got this else. Benzite. Uh Jenny, do you want a Benzite? That would be amazing. Here, just it's up in here. Just grab oh, it. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh. there we go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, wow, what a deal, everybody. That's amazing. so nice. Oh, I love a benzite. Sorry that oh, it smells like black so licorice. <laughs> <laughs> that's it'll, that's canon now. That's I'll what that's what it, it smells it, like. Uh, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, but but maybe I mean. Now JJ doesn't have anything, so um, okay, I, I've I've got this um, I've got this Borg. Ooh. Oh, yeah! I maybe... would resist you giving that to me, but it come would on, be he's got ooh, a detachable arm. I Here. love it. That reminds me of give that it, '90s song. Give it a try. Detachable arm. Oh wow! Whoa! Check it out. That's awesome. Whoa, amazing. Oh. Thank you, Jen. Thank you you're, so much. You're very Does welcome. it smell like paint? Uh, it smells like decaying human flesh, but I guess that's <laughs> that's on brand for the board, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll, I'll cherish this. Thank you. Oh my God. Right well, let's get Perfect. this show started. Right now, people are like, are they just going to play marionette, <laughs> marionette games or something going on here? It's uh, free. We got to oh, get amazing. Melissa some toys too, so she can play along. Yeah, I mean action figures. Sorry, action figures, not toys. <laughs> um, everybody at home, so sorry we're a little tardy. That's my fault. I was stuck on the 101, which is a freeway, and I was, you know, I feel like the SNL skit. You know, you just take Fountain over to La Brea, and then you jump onto the 405, and you take Santa Monica to San Vicente. Uh, but that's what I was doing. And we are here now, everybody. JJ Lendl is here. Jenny R. Johnson is here. Thank Hello. goodness. Cool shirt. Thank you. Thank you. I got it at uh, Star Trek and Chill. You can get your very own Decor Province Majors shirt, everybody. There's the back. Look how gorgeous oh, yeah. that is. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Star Trek and Chill online store. 
just like the family shirt that Melissa Longo is wearing. What's up, Melissa? Hello, I am wearing the family shirt, Ferengi family. I need a Cisco family one, two. Ooh, yeah. And I think I got this shirt at like Target like five years ago. You know? <laughs> yeah. So shout out to Target, I guess. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't it's know. Beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's comfortable. Um, hello to back of the head. What's up, Dave Gregory, Chris Marshall, J.R. Poole, Kale Bliss, Bob D, Robert Kaiser out in Austria, who stays up late just for us. All other days he goes to bed at like 10. <laughs> the Matt Boardman, uh, who says the 101 is the worst this time of day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucia, what's up? Chuck A. Everybody send uh, positive vibes Chuck's way. Yes. Uh, Fran Iverson, Joshua Reeve, one Trek fan. Kyle Gray Young, what's up? Nice. All right. Let's get into the news. Everybody, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for notifications. If you're listening in, give us a five star rating and a nice review. We'd really appreciate that. Okay, JJ Lendl just moved too. If you notice, his background looks extra festive. Okay. He's still sorry. playing with the board toy. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Did this really come off? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. So we, our family is growing very soon. Um, a new, a new, a new baby. I'm, we're not all just like putting on a lot of weight. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> That's that's happening in about four weeks. And so uh, I have relocated out of my previous office space mm -hmm. in order to make that the new nursery. And now I've got this sprawling new basement space, which like behind me is like a wall, but I've got all the space in front of me, I swear. And I'm trying to figure out the layout. So <laughs> it's like you're in a closet. I know. <laughs> you're like, it's huge. There are strawberry fields over here. Mm -hmm. I got my it's barn great. over there. No, I'm missing <laughs> it all. A chorus singing on this side and uh, <laughs> take my words. There's for a it. whale. Yes. <laughs> There's still work to do, but, you know, I wanted to get festive here. I pulled out some of my old. Uh, Star Trek one sheets to put behind me so you didn't just see wow. totes. And awesome. I, I have a bunch of these collectibles that I found too, which uh, I need to get them all shined up. But I don't know if there was any uh, Hamilton Star Trek plate collectors in the 90s, but I got my uh, oh, classic picture plates here. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Movies one through six. Amazing. This was, nice. this was some of the Star Trek art that inspired me to make Star Trek art, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So. Have it's we cool talked though. about how JJ is an amazing artist? Oh, that well, that's kind. Hey, Pretty JJ, nice. you're an amazing <laughs> artist. Uh, have we talked really about is, how though. Jenny is an amazing artist? No, we talk about that all the time. <laughs> Don't <laughs> talk you. about it enough. It's really sweet. Uh, Thank you. I've we been really talk about enjoying soap sometimes. Uh, we your, do. your DS9 piece that you've been working on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having a good time, it, it, except for like a little, little tiny. Well, that's I'm I'm watching you work on it, and like I'm I'm much more of like a character. Like I love characters, and mm. then when it comes to the like the high detailed technical things, I'm just sort of like, okay, deep breath, let's get in yeah. there and do it. And so I give you all the credit in the world for just yeah. just going in there and just drawing <laughs> rivets on <laughs> you know on hall plating. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, I can imagine you just have to get into a headspace. Very much so, yeah. Literally, like you're in the spacesuit out mm -hmm. on there, just sort of like, just like on your. <laughs> it's fun. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice change of pace, right? It's like because I usually do characters, so it's. Yeah, yeah, nice to, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. like, you're making me want to challenge myself to mm. drive myself insane mm. doing a project like that. So. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Do it. That reminds me of what the the frog construction worker likes. Rivets, right? Mm. No, I don't like that. That's stupid. No, I like that. No, I like it. I oh. like it. We yes. love your jokes, Ryan. Yes, one one Borg. Are you drunk? Arm. Nice. <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, Melissa hates my jokes, and she's right. By the way. <laughs> No well, way. This is not April Fool's Day, so that's our 
Oh, wait. We don't like this your April Fool's jokes. April Fool's Day. No, wait. Every day is April Fool's Day. <laughs> right. So, so anyway, that the... statement is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the point is... I don't think you have a hateful bone in your body. <laughs> the tweet well, of the week <laughs> is from Elias Tufexis, as everybody knows, is Locke <laughs> on Star Trek Discovery Season 5. He says, me buying a bag full of Star Trek toys off some dude on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah. And topical. There. Yeah. Topical cream, right. So I don't know who this guy is. Do we know this guy? He looks Orion. I don't think we've seen him yet. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Maybe hey, look, he no. looks Cardassian. Yeah. No, yeah. Or maybe a Cardassian yes, Orion Ooh. blend. Because well, you he's know. He's definitely got stuff on the side of his Yeah. Head. He's got he's... circular. Yeah. See, this looks so it's Cardassian. Cardassian. But do they but they don't have he... circular things well, like this? It used to be triangles above the eyebrows where the eyebrows are. Yeah. That lead up to the ridges. And then there's a, the spoon in the middle. <laughs> but he's yes, green. The spoon. Yeah. But Where with Discovery, he? you can never be sure because they, mm -hmm. they'll remix these designs uh, a lot. Like you look at the Ferengis that have been popping up on Discovery. Right. Like yeah, absolutely. -esque, but certainly like not, not the prosthetics we would see in like a 24th or a 25th century track. Mm-hmm. That's evolution, baby. That's, you know. The That's like universe. a Pearl Jam quote. Did you do that on purpose? I did not. That's evolution, oh, wow. baby, is a Pearl Jam Yeah. Quote. That's evolution, baby. Amazing. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Elvis. <laughs> See, I think he has Elvis vibes. I, I, totally. Yeah, he without does, a doubt. Right. But yeah. this is when he does his screeching voice, when he says, it's evolution, baby. You know, when he does his, like, screech, not the... Yep. Not we'll the try that. home drawn pictures of mountain top. You know, when he's doing this kind of mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Everybody get out there and vote. Yeah, he's very. <laughs> so back on Twitter.com real quick for the another tweet of the week. Because it's Twitter Tuesday. I don't know why I whispered that. Sorry. What did you whisper? We I didn't hear it. Twitter Tuesday. Ooh, I like that. Let's try that again. <laughs> because everybody knows on the main viewer we have Twitter Tuesday. Twitter Tuesday. Twitter Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so this is from Trek Central at the Trek Central. New regram Jack Wade message. Sorry, Jack Quaid message. While Jack Quaid no longer posts on this platform. He did share a message on his Instagram account about the sad news. Star Trek Lower Decks will end with its upcoming fifth season. That well, is we, so I think... amazing. <laughs> Just looking at his face and he's a perfect blend of Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid. He really totally. is. And yeah. Boimler. Yeah. And Boimler. A little Boimler <laughs> thrown in. <laughs> that butt wiggle. <laughs> I wonder if he got that from cats getting ready to pounce. I like that. <laughs> oh, maybe. So Jack Quaid says, hello, Lower Deckers. I'm so sad to announce the Paramount Plus won't be moving forward with more seasons of Lower Decks. I can't begin to tell you what an honor it's been to be a part of this show and the Star Trek universe at large. I want to thank each and every person who put so much of their hard work and talent into every episode. You are amazing. The good news is that everyone who makes Lower Decks loves making Lower Decks. I could play Boimler for 17 more seasons. No joke. I'm serious. I love that purple-haired nerd. Hopefully we find a new home, but until then, please look forward to an amazing season five. So everybody knows this was the news from Friday. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of rumblings going around, a lot of ripple effects. JJ, I don't know if you saw our show on Friday, but we were all ecstatic about this. How do you feel about we were like doesn't bother me one bit but how do you I, feel about it i love when good things are over and <laughs> things i love no longer exist uh you know star trek the most masochistic fan base on the internet um i was uh shocked yeah at the news frankly and um yeah. i think that a, a lot of the fan base is probably still in a 
you know, some denial. I think that, you know, especially coming off all the drama with uh, Prodigy, Mm -hmm. um, it it feels uh, like, you know, is there a chance that, that some someone could swoop in and save this show or is this situation the way that it's going to stay i just I, I did tweet something after this news came out because it's it just seems so strange because you know last spring they not only do they cancel prodigy mm-hmm. they stop production of the new season and they take it off of their platform and then you know, by September, they're like, Star Trek Day. It's all about Trek animation. We are celebrating right. Trek animation. Not going to mention Prodigy. Lower Decks is awesome, though. Mm-hmm. And now, here in April, we're canceling Lower Decks. So it's We it's featured of... your tweet on that on Friday, by the way, behind oh, your you did? back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just sort of whiplash. It's, yeah. you know, I, I, I understand, you know, from like a logical perspective that the folks that do the publicity are not the same folks that yes. are in the room that, that are, you know, making the decisions about production, which are not right. the same people who are making creative decisions for these shows, but boy, it would be nice if some of these folks would touch base every once in a while to try to come up with somewhat of a cohesive marketing production, mm-hmm. creative strategy for this, you know, mm-hmm. over 50 year old uh franchise but mm-hmm. yeah i don't know what to say like a lot of people online were were saying like hey five years you know that's a good run and um it's been a great five years but you know this is not like a five-year run from from 15 years ago like no. right. Right. I have 10 episode seasons these are right 15 yeah. episodes uh yeah. you know i think like what the 50th episode of the next generation was what, like shades of gray or something like yeah, think about, practically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like think about if the show would have ended there. Think about yeah. if <laughs> any of the Trek shows that ran in the nineties had ended before they got to the end of their second season. Well, True. Said. Yeah. I, I, well, yeah. I was reading an article about this very topic um, saying that, well, the the new formula for Trek is looks like it's going to be season five seasons, and for ten episodes, and and they were saying the reason being is that we don't need filler episodes anymore, and now we're just going to get movie quality episodes every single time. And I'm thinking, you know, if this happened back in the day, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have gotten episodes like duet yeah where there or was take nothing me out to the hollow but, suite exactly right. or yeah. measure of a man or yeah. these the offspring character these, yes yes yeah these character driven episodes that that show you the day in the life of this crew that's living on a spaceship and trekking and exploring the universe or exploring the universe because the universe is coming to them yeah. on Deep Space Nine. So it, it, we, there's, I would rather less movie quality. I don't need to watch yes. a movie every single week. Yeah. I don't need a totally. space battle every single week. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see people riding on top of spaceships. I don't need to see all of that. I want to connect with the characters. Yeah. I want to see who's driving this and I want to see how they live. Yeah. Not just the the explosion of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I but I think that comes down to trust in your audience. Yeah. That they don't yes. need, you know, your audience isn't a cat who needs, you know, a bell to be rung mm-hmm in front of them in order to keep right. their attention my mouth just watered why is that <laughs> Never mind. Keep, going. keep going dr Sorry. pavlov uh <laughs> I, yeah i could rant i could rant about this for the entire time that that mm. uh this episode is going to air but i i am struck it and i think that's a really good point i mean you are you have exploding budgets per episode mm-hmm. of these shows to the point where it is not practical to create a 20, right. 24 episode season. And I feel like that is the trend, not just in television, but ge- just generally in Hollywood. We're yeah. pouring mm-hmm. more resources into single projects, single episodes, single films, 
which puts so much pressure on those projects to perform outstandingly mm -hmm. and leaves very little room, not just for projects to find a nice middle ground of profitability, but also for projects to find their footing. And that is so important in television right. when you're going week to week. Yeah. And so you right. have these shows that are developing over a certain period of time where the, the, you pull the plug before they have reached sort of their peak or Maturity. at least the beginning of their peak. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that, I think in five to 10 years, I really do hope that we're going to look back at this era of streaming um, and sort of television projection with these, with these huge budgets and these short episode numbers. And we're going to realize, Oh, the shows made in this era just simply don't have the, the staying power that, TV shows with a, a larger episode count mm -hmm. and smaller per episode budgets do because right. people want a longer journey. Not, yes. you know, right. They want more. A more extravagant and 41 minute think, episodes. Right. I think a lot of these shows, they age well too. A lot of these just bottle episodes. I mean, some of them were misses, sure. tons of misses, but there are also some hits. And I think fan the fan base is willing to take some of these misses if it means mm. we get more hits but it seems like the the powers that be right now disagree with that they want yeah. right 10 hits out of 10 and we're saying like okay let's get those 10 hits out of 10 and then give us 15 more episode where six of them are hits we'll yeah. take yeah. the nine lesser episodes that some will fight for and say no it's actually a really good episode and whatever <laughs> If it means we're getting more content, some good, some medium, some mm -hmm. bad, it's just more. And and to Melissa's point, yeah, we don't need these movies. We don't need, I mean, obviously they know what they're doing. They understand that the data shows that people want movie quality. Okay, yeah. maybe, maybe people do in general, but I don't think we care about that stuff no. as much. I mean, it's great to see and mm -hmm. we do love it, but it's not the be all end all it's it's it doesn't it's end not the why so yet. many of us are are coming like like come back to star trek exactly. over and over again yes exactly you know, i want to not... see yeah. a group of smart people who are great at their jobs solving a problem together as a team around a table you know what i mean like yeah like that's one of my favorite things to watch on star trek is just smart people figuring stuff out you know right. um or, or scenes like we are in a bar and you're discussing root beer and, and its relevance to yes. Starfleet mm -hmm. and the, you know, how analogous it is to Starfleet. So mm -hmm. we we don't get those kind of moments anymore. And just whether, in time. whether there's an, if the episodes are a miss or not, uh, so many of these episodes have such great moments in them that are you know, you should, tre that are treasured, <laughs> treasured moments. And I'm sorry, but we wouldn't have gotten a ghost candle, <laughs> sex candle. <laughs> right. And that's, yeah. that's gold. How are right. you? <laughs> I mean. Think about how happy Miles O'Brien's life would have been if there were only <laughs> 10 episodes a season. Right? You can't allow that. Right. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. He would have never had to suffer. Yeah. Right. That's funny. Uh, I mean, just a lot of this has to do with, with I, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, you know, they, they used, to, there used to be this magic number in, in network television, mm -hmm. which was a hundred episodes, because if you had a hundred yeah. episodes, you could sell your show as a syndication package to mm -hmm. other affiliate channels, to cable channels. The idea being that if you have a hundred episodes, you could air one episode every weeknight for 20 weeks in a row, which is mm -hmm. about half, you know, almost half the calendar year. And I would be interested to know how many current Star Trek fans discovered shows like The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, through those syndication packages, as opposed yeah, okay. to... Yeah, yep. hey. absolutely. Um, totally. Mm -hmm. and and so when you take away the vehicle, which a lot of your staunch fan base has discovered the show, what does that do to the longevity of your franchise? Mm -hmm. and boy, we're going to find out eventually. Um, 
And I don't know if, you know, the powers that be are going to love the answer because right. I think a lot of these decisions, which are considered smart business decisions in the moment, Ryan, you talking about, well, the trend is high action, high budget. This mm -hmm. is what the people want. I don't know if you have all the data available to actually say in the long exactly. term whether it's going right. to be more healthy yeah. for yeah. IP. Well, yeah. and, that's and what it is. They're difficult. living in the now. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. They're living for the quarter. We need to make sure that this quarter is profitable, and then mm -hmm. we have right. to make sure the next quarter is profitable. But in in a larger landscape, shouldn't there be somebody in the room that is tapping them on the shoulder and saying, "Hey, we actually have to think about five years from now." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to think about licensing deals. We have to think, you know, there, there's yeah. so much more to the business mm -hmm. than this. Especially yeah. now that streaming is leaning back towards a cable-y kind of vibe, right. you know? I mean, right. Disney, Disney Plus just announced that they're going to do individual channels with scheduled programming. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're already yeah, doing that on some yeah. of the streamers. If you go on yeah. Peacock. Mm -hmm. An entire section of Peacock is dedicated to, you know, channels. Right. Uh, this new thing that they came up with. Right. <laughs> it's all the rage. <laughs> Something's on. Um, right. It's crazy. Well, I don't yeah. know where they think of it. Uh, but the, the current data, I have a little bit of a qualm about getting, receiving that or calculating that current data, because if that's the only thing that's available, of course, that's the only thing that's going to be watched. Mm -hmm. it, sure. it, it, if you're not given the other content, I, I don't know. It, it's just... Well, I think you're right. And I would argue that there is conflicting data out there, which is the fact that the shows that tend to be rewatched most on... Uh, platforms like Netflix and these streaming platforms tend to be older con content. I just saw a recent uh, survey and it shows like Gilmore Girls, which mm -hmm. are being yes. watched over and over again. Yeah, The Office. I right. did a rewatch yeah. of the Gilmore Girls. That, Friends, that ran, Seinfeld. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They ran seven plus seasons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they ran, you know, 20 to, to 26 episode seasons. Mm -hmm. Some half hour format, some hour format. When we talk about binge TV, which is something that some people love and some people don't love, you know, I, I don't like binge TV in the sense that, hey, we just spent a kajillion dollars to make six episodes of a TV show and we're going to drop them all in one day. Yeah, so right. that you can watch them all in one sitting and it's like eating candy on Halloween. And by the end of the night, you're vomiting into your, you know, into yeah. your pumpkin. <laughs> um, that's yeah. how I feel about it sometimes. Ew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you saw that video too? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but I think about binging, the way that I like to binge is that if I discover a show which has a plethora of episodes available mm -hmm. to stream, then you can watch that at your leisure. A show just like Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Right. You discover Gilmore Girls. It's got snappy writing. It's got fun character dynamics. Mm -hmm. And you've and got seven full seasons to watch. A lot of Star Trek references in it, it too. That's <laughs> so funny. Yes. I was As so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, you know, another show was recently canceled by NBC, which I was a big fan of, the, the Quantum Leap Revival. Yes. And oh. they had they were they had produced two seasons. The first season, this is network TV. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay. The first season had 18 episodes, and the second season ended up getting 13 episodes. So 31 mm -hmm. episodes in all. And, you know, that's not not a great run for a network television show. Yeah. Because again, it wasn't given time right. to build an audience. And even mm -hmm. so, I would argue that the show, I think even more so than a lot of Trek shows that were, that were, you know, on that episode model had found its footing a lot, a lot sooner. I think I was looking at like by episode 31 of the next generation, you hadn't gotten to measure of a man. You hadn't yeah. got the board. Yes. Um, yeah. You right. Know, right. Deep design, you haven't, you haven't met the Dominion. There's no Defiant. There, mm -hmm. you know, there's no Bald Cisco with the goatee. Mm -hmm. No, right. no Seven of Nine with Voyager. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, this is before Enterprise sort of switched gears and started to talk about nine eleven. Yeah, um, getting mm -hmm. serialized. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and so it's just like, how many shows from this era are going to be what ifs? Right. Um, right. 
yeah, it, it's it's unfortunate. And I feel bad for the writers and the producers who mm-hmm. put so much time and effort into building a world. And then, you know, the executives just are not keen to give them a chance to to see where that goes. At the and, same time, I'm just time I'm-, I'm just remembering that a lot of the writers have said 26 episodes a year was hell. Right. So maybe there's a happy medium. Right. Yeah, because maybe they're sense. saying we could, you know, there a lot of them might be like, we don't want to go to the dark ages again. That was hell. We could right. not knock out an episode every week. We all know they do two episodes, or sorry, it takes two weeks to do an episode. So two every month. So maybe there's a happy medium. Maybe they mm-hmm. could do 16 to 20. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 20 might and, be and nice. I argue, 16. I would argue that I think you're absolutely right. And I would argue the other side of that is I think that there are a lot of writers in the streaming era who, and this is this is pre-strike, because, you know, there was a lot of hinky things going on in writers' rooms. Right. It's, oh, yeah. Right. Before the strike, you know, you'd mm-hmm. have a guy, you know, a, a, a showrunner, a, 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 a person coming in who was basically like writing the scripts by themselves over like a period of weeks. Mm-hmm. They couldn't go to set. And so on the other side of that issue is you don't have a lot of job security with these short run seasons. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially if you you have a production, which is sort of not extending a writer's expertise into production. If it's all pre-production. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Ryan, you're right. If there's a happy medium, I think that if you, if you have, first of all, if you have a large enough writer's room where it doesn't feel like a nightmare where people Mm -hmm. can sort of split, that workload mm-hmm. yeah. to be over a longer period of time. And or split, have split a 20 episode season like Prodigy did. They're like, no, it's one 20 episode season, not two 10 yeah. episode seasons. <laughs> they split, that works well, too. It looks like. <laughs> right. Well, and, as long as you, as long as you are keeping the show going for seven seasons. Yes. Great. Yeah. Because then you're, you're building that library of episodes. You're expanding the universe. Right. And yeah. frankly, that, and that's a big reason why Star Trek has, you know, has lasted almost this 60 years. Life. It's yes. almost 60 years. And they mm-hmm. ran long seasons back in the 60s. Yeah. The first season of TOS has 29 episodes in it. Yes. Uh, wow. You know, that's the first crazy. season of, yeah. of TOS almost has more episodes than the two seasons of Quantum Leap got. So yeah. it has more than the two episodes of the animated series. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know, it's just a completely different landscape now. And I feel like everybody in a way is getting getting, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a disservice to literally everyone. Yes. I mean, Mm -hmm. it it goes to your statement uh, in the writer's room goes for the actors too. Adrian Paliki was saying something very similar to what you were saying in that it's not sustainable. The actor can't wait three years between jobs. Yeah. It's not realistic. It, right. And and it shouldn't be realistic. I mean, everyone should be able to make a sustainable, livable wage in their own profession. Yeah. Yeah. I know these radical things that we're discussing <laughs> I here. <know>. I just <laughs> think it, 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 it comes under the umbrella of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I don't mm-hmm. think that the network model was necessarily broken. I don't think people were yeah. sitting there wringing their fists saying, well, right. you know, oh, I'm, I've got another bottle episode here. I, yeah. I can't, you know, I'm going to give up on this show. <laughs> yeah. Leave we're Brian alone. Money. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. We owe Brian alone. Right? <laughs> I don't think people no. were doing that. And, no, you know, they I, they're like, and we I, already I, saw so an O'Brien these... torture episode. But not this season. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and then yep. people are still watching those O'Brien torture episodes over and over and over right? again. Be- and and, and, yeah. They've been with 26 episodes to choose from. They're still going back to those episodes. Yep. And you can't tell me that, you know, that just because the critics found this one episode bad, somebody doesn't love it. Mm-hmm. You know, it... it it, it all works together. It's this huge tapestry of this universe. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. I'm just going to pull out the figure, but I don't have it anymore. Um, <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> uh, yeah. I, and and I, 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 we're going on and on about this. But I know. <laughs> I remember. But I love when, it. 
when uh did I, did I did I tell you my Star Trek Nemesis story where I cut school to go see Nemesis oh, when no. I was a senior in high school? Hmm. Sounds familiar well, to me. Tell oh, please it. tell you're it. You're making noises like you're gonna call the principal and say, Oh really? No, 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 no. I'm just wondering <laughs> I'm just wondering uh, what you thought of it in the end. Was it worth it? So th this is sort of my point. For, I'll, mm. I'll say really fast. I, I, it, you know, it came out on a Friday. I, my buddy who had a car, we cut school and we went to the theater. And he, and he wasn't a big Star Trek fan. So, mm. and by the time we got to the theater, he was so not excited about seeing this movie. I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna head back to school, man. If you want to go see it by <laughs> yourself, I was like, oh, okay, that's yeah, that's fine. So, um, but as much as I was, you know, sort of left with a you know kind of lukewarm feeling about the film the first time i saw it it was nice to revisit the characters again yeah for sure and i think that's what people feel about star trek in general is that you know star trek as a place star trek as a family mm -hmm. and you just want to spend as much time with these characters and right. as much time in this place as you can yeah and when you've got these really short seasons that have like a year mm -hmm. or two in between them exactly. it's really hard mm -hmm. to to feel like you are keeping up with your old friends exactly yeah. well yeah i mean it, it's part also part of the reason why people have are still watching the same soap operas decades later yeah these same exact characters in this same exact show 20 or 30 years later yeah um the start uh law and order svu yes has been running for how long they have how many episodes per season and it's because people have invited olivia benson into their lives they live yeah. with her from week to week and they want to live with the characters of star trek from week to week we don't yeah. need to see you know these battles from week to week we want to know what they ate for dinner right oh. who's making the bad eggs this week exactly yeah. exactly yeah and i i will say strange new worlds is doing wonderful with that in that they are. they're introducing that day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. um in the show and yeah in, in their episodes. considering how day to day or day to day uh, we have <laughs> a poll too. in the live chat everybody the question is what would you rather have per season, Beverly? 25 <laughs> mixed exactly bag answer. episodes. Yeah, 25 mixed bag episodes, mm. good and bad. Or 20 mostly solid episodes, a few bad ones. 15 predominantly very good episodes. Or 10 amazing <gasps> movie quality episodes. Uh, and I think yeah, that's I mean, debatable too, right? 20? Like if yeah. they're always going to be, if the 10, you know, if you go full on 10 episodes, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, and we're going to make every one of these as a movie experience and it's going to be incredible. I mean, you're still, but some of them might not be good. There's still going to be yeah. some duds, some misses. Absolutely. That's just yeah. mm -hmm. how it works. That's just going to be natural. Yeah. And yeah but okay. you're going to minimize those and you're boosting up the quality. Um, I think I have a feeling I know where this poll is going to go. And it seems like it is going in that direction, <laughs> mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that these companies are just trying to survive right now. There's this big boom. Yeah. They're trying to just, trying to survive and they have to out wow the other companies. And this is the current model. And I wonder if Paramount or CBS or bad robot or skydance or whomever is going to be doing this going forward if they said all right we're gonna have strange new worlds doing 10 episodes make them all phenomenal great we're gonna introduce a different ship with different characters different everything takes place in you know 2405 right after picard season three ends and they're just gonna do their thing and they're gonna have like 25 episodes it's gonna be like old school some good ones, some bad ones. You'll have some chain of command, some best of both worlds, but mostly it'll be a lot of bottle episodes. We're not going to mm. do this big budget thing. It'll have the same budget as the 10, but each episode on average will be right. cost 40% less, right? Mm -hmm. right? I would I would love to see how those two would compare. Would yeah. Star Trek fans watch those 10 episodes two and a half times as much as mm -hmm. they watch 
the 25 to make it even? Or would there be no drop off? Would they watch all the new Star Trek episodes, all 25 of them, even if the budget is lower and there's some meridians in there or whatever, you know? Of mm-hmm. course they would. I think so. <laughs> would. Of course we would. <laughs> it's and, Star Trek. You know, if if <laughs> the idea for, everything. Mm-hmm. Right. If the idea for these streaming uh, services is to avoid churn, you know, the idea of people canceling a service and signing up for another service because the show that they're watching is off and then they might sign up later for it. If right. you've got 25 weeks of programming in a row yep. or close to in a row, Nobody's yeah. going to be canceling the service week to week. So exactly. I don't know. Maybe that's a way to deal with the issue. Which I think I I can't imagine Paramount Plus didn't see that happen like over the last. Yeah. You know, that mm-hmm. that 18 month stretch where we just had co- Star Trek constantly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I'm sure that they did. They, they have all the data. So right. but again, I, I, I yeah. guess this is the data, which somewhere in this data, there's it's like, let's wipe Prodigy off of the app. Let's Which cancel makes, lower yeah. decks. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes no sense though because yeah. Prodigy is being nominated for Emmys. Lower decks has yeah. appeared at the on the top ten list of the Nielsen ratings multiple times, and mm-hmm. these shows obviously are critically and fan received very highly, and yeah. still they're getting canceled. It makes no sense. It seems like it, they're shooting themselves in the foot because they're they're canceling solid product yeah i don't i don't know in a world where you know media is wiped clean off of streaming services in order to save money on royalties Mm -hmm. and for tax write-offs anything can happen it's Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think them wiping prodigy probably had to do with them being able to be like here we'll sell you not just the new season but you'll have exclusivity on the old season but but, 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 it, but, but then it just it's this yeah i don't know commerce thing that and, and i i understand it's a business i do and i do understand right. it's a business but it's just I don't yeah know, but I, and, I, and i get that too my I, I guess my overarching argument is is this good business <laughs> Like I know it's you it know the argument's always like it's a business, folks. They got to do. It's like, but is this? Are we yeah. sure? They- Late oh, here's stage the thing. capitalism. Mm. Here's the yeah. thing. Um, when it comes to business, I think also that model has changed to where people are not necessarily looking five years into the future. Yeah. It's good business for right now. They may think, mm. um, but they're not looking at long term. They're like, who gives up about long term? I'm not going to be here in five years, right. maybe. I right. might get fired in five months. Why right. am I worried what Paramount <laughs> is going to do right. 15 years from now? Right. If sure. I'm 63, I got two years left in me. My typing fingers are tired. You know, like, <laughs> so we're yeah. thinking what is a great business model long term, but mm-hmm. hardly anybody has a vested interest in the long term thing. They're just trying to look good right now to keep their job. Plus, with social media, with the internet, things move a lot faster. And mm-hmm. something someone, I read somewhere several years back, and it really stuck with me, is they said 50% of the jobs that will be happening five years from now have not been invented yet. Right. And you got to look at it that way, that half the jobs that we will be doing as a society in five years, do not yet exist, have not even been invented. They don't exist. So people can't even look five years into the future. Look at what we're doing. Not that that we're making millions off this, (laughs) but five years, 10 years ago, right? didn't mean anything. Yeah. You know, if they said, hey, we'll be, oh man, ah, five years from now, you guys are all going to be talking on and people will also talk in a live chat. We'd be like, "I'm not sure I'm following you." Yeah, wait, not what? that we're getting any money on this, but mm-hmm. a lot of people do, and a lot of people will. Maybe five years from now, maybe five years from now, this is going to be bringing in tons of money, mm-hmm. and JJ is going to be like, "You better bring me on as a guest way more often." Punk, piss me <laughs> off. <laughs> and I'll say but, punk because I'm, I'm an old Clint Eastwood type at that point. Exactly. Um, 
So things but are accelerating I, you know, I, and I'm worried I, that I, we may never go back to that old time. I think, and I, I think you're right about that. I will argue that, you know, I think, I, yeah, I think all these folks, these executives, these, these business, business people are very much living in the moment. They're living quarter mm -hmm. to quarter. And especially like you're talking about, we have no idea what the landscape's going to look like in five years. That's true. why if, if a company, if a studio could embrace innovation rather than yeah. whatever they're doing right now, they can set the tone. Yeah. Instead Find of just circling the wagons. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And, and maybe to that is sort of, that yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. What if a company did decide like, well, let's turn the clock back a little bit. Let's think about what worked, you know, 15 years ago and mm -hmm. what what made all these tentpole franchises that we are desperately trying to milk now for some nostalgia because people remember them yeah from, what was actually the thing that made them successful and let's see if we can find that and replicate it on a large scale and that mm -hmm. might lead them to things like lower budgets more episodes uh you know just sort of focusing on the creatives in the room rather right. than, you know, thinking about, okay, what are they saying on social media right now? What is the right. loudest corner of social media saying we should do? Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't never listen to the loudest corner. No. <laughs> Don't ever. But I get your point. Just one guy, one really upset guy. It's four, <laughs> and his four sock puppet accounts. Exactly. Right. Exactly. right. Hey, uh, we got to move on to more things, but this is clearly the biggest issue. This is clearly the biggest issue mm -hmm. and everybody has a lot to talk about. But just, just one more point on innovation. Because uh, you mentioned innovation and made me think of a couple things. One is that innovation is a gamble, right? Mm, you're right. There's a big company. They're like, here's the model. This is how we make money. This is how we keep our jobs. This is how my buddy Fran and Sally keep their jobs below me. Because if we don't make this money, they get cut. So, right. so that gamble is probably rarely done with big companies. And that innovation usually comes from smaller companies because they got, they got less to lose, right? For example, look at Virtual TrekCon. We created the first and biggest uh, virtual Star Trek and sci-fi convention in the history yeah. of the world. It's never mm -hmm. been done before because we had nothing to lose. Nobody's getting fired. Nobody's missing any money. We had yeah. no money to make. That, you know, So that's where those things come from, the Lappy Awards. So the innovation's going to come from new companies, I would think that mm -hmm. I feel like that's that makes sense. Yeah. where it comes from. Plus, there's just way more of those. And one of them is going to hit big. And then all these big goat companies are going to be like, let's yeah. all do that. And then they're all going to follow <laughs> that's the new thing. Netflix was that company back in yes. the day. Right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. And then I would argue that that has happened already in the film industry. If you look at a studio like A24, mm. who has had a ton of success creating smaller or mid-budget movies mm, that are just really creatively daring and interesting. And boy, has that paid off. Mm -hmm. here's, here's my concern with, with your premise, Ryan, is that as opposed to that leading the, the larger companies to say, hey, this is the thing we need to do. I find that the trend recently has been this smaller company is doing well. Let's gobble them up. Oh, absolutely. Let's buy yes. them. No, that's, you're right. That's totally happening they don't in say, the health care. Let's do health... that. They say rather than us do it, let's just yeah. acquire mm -hmm. the thing that is doing it. But no. sorry, what were you saying, Melissa? No, I was going to say that's exactly what's happening to these health food restaurants that they're being acquired by larger companies that are really? not as interested or invested in good healthy product mm -hmm. and so they're gobbling these these companies up and trying to put them out because they they think well this model's already been made but right. their heart isn't in the in the right place yep. they're they're so they, they like the branding they like the mm -hmm. messaging exactly they don't want the competition yeah exactly they don't want the competition so those go under because they don't know how to approach it because they're they haven't done the work for it right oh. well see what, what jj's talking about with the swallowing of the of the new the yeah. shiny new penny that's doing well 
that is their business model. <laughs> that, yes. like, look at look yes. at Disney. Disney's yeah, like that's true. they're sitting on a hoard of wealth like a dragon. Yeah. And then some new guy comes skipping along, like, hey, I found a buck. And they're like, your dollar is mine now. <laughs> and then they yeah. just swallow and, and you know, everything. if if the idea is okay, we're gonna acquire this and we're gonna try and you know vivisect what's happening here and see if we can replicate it on a larger scale but that isn't usually what happens it sort of becomes let's take this all right this is our business plan now let's try to graft this over this new thing and then it sort of defeats the purpose of acquiring it in the first place mm -hmm. because you've just yeah. turned it into another you know arm gear. of the octopus yeah <laughs> right exactly so this is a super uh, upbeat and optimistic uh, conversation that we that we are. But I feel having like we here. could talk about it forever because that Literally. makes because it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, okay, so we will move on, but in the live chat, let's close out this poll. Oh, yeah. uh, I think the good news is that most people are very interested in this kind of conversation because it's mm -hmm. super important. It's not just yeah. about this huge news with lower decks, which is huge news, it's huge but it's news. also about like what the fuck is going on. We were riding right. high mm -hmm. just a year two years ago with Star Trek and suddenly we're all going like, whoa, what's mm -hmm. yeah. what's going on? Wait a minute. Is this a blip? Are we imagining this or is something falling apart already? Is this the new model? Is our, I don't know if I want to live on a roller coaster for the rest of my life. This is crazy. Yeah. Where, where like Wall Street makes all the decisions about everything. Right. Yeah. Wall Street Koenig? So <laughs> uh, the question was, what would you rather have per season? And 10% said they want 10 amazing movie quality mm. episodes. 18% said 25 mixed bag episodes. Some good, some bad. Just go back to the old ways. Just do it. This is for our 80 and up contingency. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I'm with you guys probably. Well, and then the, uh, fifth, 15 predominantly very good episodes was voted on by 26% of you and 44% of you said 20 mostly solid episodes with a few bad. You see what they've done to us, you guys? <laughs> I feel like almost all of us would have said 25 episodes because it's more Star Trek. Yeah. They've made us already willing to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I felt that same way. Yeah. Like, what did I say? How about just 15 or 20? Yeah. We're already negotiating against ourselves to try to convince. Right. How, mm -hmm. We'll just do, you guys can have your. <laughs> we'll, we'll take 15. <laughs> We're already <laughs> negotiating down just to, mm -hmm. to yeah. bend, to, to show how reasonable we are in good faith. Right. <laughs> but perhaps, perhaps, like you, you talk about, you know, innovation is risk risk is like uh, all these companies are very risk averse when it comes to things yeah if you want to roll out a new model maybe this is the way that you do it where you don't make this huge jump from 10 to 25 exactly you pat it out and you see what the response is mm -hmm. from your mm -hmm. fan base from from your shareholders we all know that that's a huge part yeah. of it as well right and yeah it really is i mean i you know i hate to be like this but it's about a narrative and, you know, when it comes to things like Wall Street, when it comes to shareholders and things like that, it's all about the narrative that a mm -hmm. company is able to create. You can use data to do that. You can use all types Jordy. of statistics to, yeah. to create that. <laughs> there you go. Where is he? I have one. Yes. <laughs> nice. No, but that's true. You need Just data. for an experiment, Strange New Worlds could say, hey, we're going to do 15 episodes this season. I bet nobody would be like, they better be good. I think everybody would say... Hooray! Are you kidding me? Yes. And then yeah. you go from there. <laughs> yeah, they're like you're LaForging a new path. Uh, um, oh, nice. A plus. And hopefully you pressure it. Um, oh. Ooh, one double pressure it. Um, <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, amazing. I, it, you know, I, I just I just feel like this isn't a Star Trek problem. This is an industry problem. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as much as we wish that Star Trek would be on its own little entertainment island where, you know, the trends of of, you know, Hollywood and the television industry can't touch it. It is very much, you know, this is the the franchise that launched a television network with yeah. UPN 
You know, yeah. Star Trek has always been linked to these larger moments. It was one of the most successful first run syndication series in history mm-hmm. uh, with TNG in the 80s. And so, you know, Star Trek has always sort of been uh, one of the pieces in innovation mm-hmm. when it comes to television. From mm-hmm. first run syndication to launching a new network. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, you know, it was sort of decided that Star Trek would be the centerpiece of Paramount streaming service. And I don't think they had a choice. That was their biggest show. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could be living in a world where there's like seven Transformers TV series, I guess, mm-hmm. or like a new Mission Impossible, you know, television universe. But Star Trek's the, the clear choice. And I think the unfortunate thing about that is that then Star Trek as a franchise and as a property becomes linked to these new realities. And we're at a point now where Mm -hmm. because somebody made the decision, Star Trek is a streaming property. Star Trek does not air on television, network or cable for the most part. Then the fate of streaming has now become the fate of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, those days are Vorgon. Oh. Hey. Oh. so sorry so sorry to say it's a Vorgon ah. conclusion some people I, might I, say I think you're barkling up the wrong tree with that. Oh, no. oh this is man oh. life is fun <laughs> all right Ooh. so this is trekcentral.net there's some people that are like what's this classic Star Trek alien in the Star Trek section 31 they've been waiting for an hour and they're pissed. <laughs> so the question is, what's the classic Star Trek alien in Star Trek Section 31? <laughs> now, I was fooled by this. Classic. Like classic or classic? Voyager. Right. <laughs> see, I see classic and I see oh, Voyager. Voyager. So I, am, I, am I wrong that classic usually means original series? T-O-S, yeah. yeah That's they what usually I use think. They usually use the word legacy to, to talk about yeah, sort of yeah, a yeah, more but... general. Right. So it says we're, Section 31 is still a project we know little about because it's secret. Mm-hmm. A few weeks ago, we caught our first glimpse at the upcoming streaming film led by Michelle Yeoh, which we learned about while we learned about a returning character from an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, putting doubt on when the movie is actually Ooh. set in the timeline. Another curveball has appeared as a classic Star Trek alien detail has popped up. Wait, while we learned about a returning character from an episode. Of, we did? Did we? Did you I click on that? Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> Or will that just take us to Easter egg analysis thing. theories? How do we yeah. not know this? We learned about a returning <laughs> character from Star Trek. Uh, Should we continue? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> should we continue on and find out who this classic alien is? Or should we be like, what's this thing we all learned about that nobody knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> wonder if i have their action figure here i'm glad right? I, yeah i'm glad i'm not alone on not knowing who that is yeah, it's like <laughs> what wait huh oh yes rachel garrett duh oh <laughs> yeah. right we rachel totally garrett. we totally we did, did learn about it and talk we about totally it we totally yeah. did i did <laughs> see that headline <laughs> thanks Ro- uh I, robert kaiser is the one that i saw but also nice. joshua reeve said it and oh thanks um, guys so, did Tara P. Yeah, they're like, you guys covered it to death. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> we had a thumbnail. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I actually saw that sure. headline and thought that it was an old headline from Picard. So right. I had to go oh, wow. like, this must be a year old. Yeah, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oops. And then oh, we oops. forgot. <laughs> well, we're going through the regular characters, not right. the... Yeah. Okay, so, so that alien... Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so wait, and I'm also, sorry. I, I'm curious because did did they is that for sure that Rachel Garrett is going to show up in Section yeah, 31? I believe. Yeah. yeah, that was. It was in the big variety from Star scoop. Trek. Okay. Yeah. Are we talking uh, recast here or yes. young Rachel okay. Garrett, young version? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Like mid twenties or something, yeah. early twenties maybe. Okay. Uh, but check this out. So I can't go uh, it says okay. it it says it right here, Rachel Garrett. 
It's like two Are you telling me down. that if you continue to read an article, <laughs> it will give you more information on the topic? Because oh that's, that's too easy for 2024. I love how that's they say everybody funny. knows this thing. And then two paragraphs lower, they're like, by the way, it's the, 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 here it yeah. is. Here's that information. <laughs> Joshua Reeves says, God. we were here. We were here and so were you. But now here's the interesting thing. We were here. Uh, IMDb lists actress Ava Blackwell appearing in Section 31 as a vaudoir. <gasps> is that wow. A yeah. Blackwell was not previously listed as appearing in the film, although she's no stranger to the Star Trek franchise. She's previously appeared in 27 episodes of Star Trek Discovery, mostly as an Osnalis. Everybody remembers the Osnalis alien with like all the funny things yeah. coming out of its face, big head, always on the bridge. But also as Lieutenant Ina, mm -hmm. Captain Rama. Oh, that was Captain Rama. I think that was in the, a very recent episode. And even mm -hmm. a Kelpian. There's even an appearance listed in the upcoming Star Trek Discovery series finale, Life itself, airing this Ooh. May. While she's no stranger to heavy alien prosthetics, what is this new role she's taken on in the Vaudoir? What if I told you that this complicates the question of when the movie is taking is set significantly? Oh, that's Ooh. interesting. So this could of hold this article key. is very personal. It is. Yeah. Someone's it? taking me aside saying, JJ, what if I told you? <laughs> mm -hmm. And everything. The you've... I. First person. Right. I've never seen an article saying I. They do that. Very what Trek if Central I does told this. You? Yeah. I would get in trouble levels? if I wrote this for my high school English class. All right. Keep distance mm. between you and the reader. Wait, uh, exactly. wait is there. What is we. it? You say we. <laughs> so everybody remember this yeah. guy. Oh. What? Quite the neck on that guy. Yeah. Oh. Forehead looks like part of a Klingon prosthetic. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. With a little bit little bit of cele, right? Mm-hmm. Sale Queen. Like a cobra. Yeah. So anyway, um Yeah, I don't says, know if I would call that a classic Star Trek alien, but yeah, I guess they mean uh, like mm. everything pre-2017, maybe. Yeah. 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 Legacy. It says, Legacy. however, uh, 600 Vaudoir survived the bombardment by the Ture coalition and entered stasis for nearly 900 years. This is in I the episode Dragon's Teeth on Voyager. Okay, I need more context here. Right, the the, the oh. episode they were in is Dragon's Teeth. Um, right. Okay. Oh. And it says the USS Vo Voyager pulled them out of stasis and soon tried to take control of the ship with the help of the Ture, the Vaudoir's imperialistic ambitions were driven back and shattered. However, 53 Vaudoir vessels fled the unknown, leaving them a major threat to the Federation. So this is like a Delta Quadrant space seed. Yeah. Maybe, but, but that would not coalesce with the timeline. Right. It says they were never directly seen again in Star Trek canon, although they were the antagonists of the Delta Rising expansion of the non-canon Star Trek Online. How hmm. they appear in the Section 31 film is a mystery. Perhaps the movie is cutting through time. See, because Absolutely. they shouldn't be around at this time. Mm -hmm. right. Or some vaudoir escaped the bombardment. This would match up with their background cameo in Enterprise's Dead Stop, set in the 22nd century, where one was found aboard the automated repair system really so this That's is interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. a deep cut it's very i didn't I, I didn't know that about dead stop that's actually wild that they did that yeah, they have, they were believed to have gone extinct sometime around the 1500s mm -hmm. they were colonizers from the delta quadrant so if they had gone extinct how could they be in this movie Unless it is a time travel movie. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, even still, yeah. I mean, or they, maybe there's just one left over. Haven't... Maybe it's just one vaudoir that I they I am found. the last of my kind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. J. 
JJ, any thoughts on that? Or do you just hate the Vaudoir and wish we would move on? <laughs> You're like, you know, there are two things I don't like talking about. The Vaudoir and people that have like mint chocolate. Mint and chocolate are two separate things. That's what he I told says. you before I Blasphemy. came on. I, not discuss that <laughs> All right. I, I think that, you know, I don't really know what to make of the Section 31 movie in mm. terms of the setting because we the the whole premise of you know in discovery of where this movie is launching is basically like time travel and dimensional travel right mm-hmm. and so we you know we're talking about well, travel. the timeline if it's interdimensional travel this could be from a universe where they were incredibly successful and conquered totally. the delta quadrant right and so they're a big bad that you know are trying to break through the dimensional barrier into other realities and we've got to protect you know the multiverse from you know mm-hmm. being overtaken uh mm-hmm. this is my, my soft pitch here but um <laughs> so so i i feel like the the premise of section 31 is so wide open in a really mm-hmm. exciting way that they could really do whatever they want i mean th- that moment when uh I can't remember the name of the discovery episode, but when they bring up the hologram of a Starfleet officer right. wearing an early TNG uniform, wearing a Voyager uh, badge, mm-hmm. and they say this is this person is from an alternate universe in right. which, and I think it was basically the Kelvin universe, huh. and so right, and it's just sort of like. You know, if you're a right. if you're a longtime Trek fan, you have to wrap your mind around the idea of these different pieces of canon coming together to create this different version of events mm-hmm. and the ramifications that that could have. Mm. So they could have a lot of fun with this if they wanted to. Yeah, and bring in a lot of deep cuts. Yeah, mm-hmm. and basically not have to sort of pay the piper in terms of breaking canon. Right. Because it's just, you know, alternate yeah. universe stuff. Yeah, they're just yeah. bouncing so, around. Yeah. Like sliders. Yeah. They yeah. could be yes. so far. I hope that they be... do embrace that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm fine with mint. I think that that, I think this can be good. <laughs> Chocolate and mint together is good. Yeah, um, I like it. Good. I love it. I like to eat it. Me too. <laughs> Melissa, you were going to add something, I think. Oh yeah, no. If, if they're you're talking about interdimensional travel, then the Vaudoir could be part of the Federation mm-hmm. in a different universe. Oh my Vosh! <laughs> you are you serious? <laughs> That's true. I guess they could. Or you know, the That's sky's true. the limit. <laughs> nice. It, you know, if if you're talking about an alternate universe, then you wouldn't necessarily need to recast Rachel Garrett. It could be a true. Rachel Garrett. Who survived the, uh, you know, the destruction of the? Mm-hmm. And we don't and know that's that what she I've been did. telling you. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, I'm right. Like desperately oh, looking did. for. Oh, I know. I'm like, I only have five of these guys on hand, so I'm running out of <laughs> things to say. Let's oh. see. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, I, I think stuff. you're absolutely row, row, right. Where's your row? Riker? You're absolutely Whoa. Riker. You're Riker. Absolutely... You're absolutely Riker. 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 <laughs> Riker. <laughs> A lot of Rikers here. <laughs> wow. So anyway, we're going to move on from that because, you know, there's that's an open door. That's an open book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. more to develop there, but that's really interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff from trekcentral.net. Yeah. Always they're always scouring IMDb and being like, look, something yeah. new is added. Mm. And then they go, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. They take you <laughs> aside and they say, what I told you? <laughs> So here's another interesting tidbit. Which is another one of these, hey, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And that is a trekmovie.com article here. 
about Whoopi Goldberg yes. talking with <laughs> Zoe Saldana. I always thought it was Zoe Saldana, but in this article, it's got the yeah the oh. Pinye. Pinye thing. So I'm yeah. like, that means it's Saldana this whole time. Hmm. You guys, we should have been saying Saldana. Or maybe she just added it recently. Sometimes people go back maybe. to their roots. Yeah, I remember true. I had an art teacher. He was always called Mr. Agar, and which didn't work with the spelling. He's like, I went back to Italy. Turns out it's Aguiar. I'm like, no shit. That's what the letters say. Anyway, <laughs> that's what your name says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I noticed that N thing too. And I was like, oh, have I been yeah, saying it wrong? <laughs> it's suddenly it's there. So let's yeah. call it Saldana. I just figured out how, how to do it with the uh, keyboard. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. So they're talking about her, uh, Zoe, and her new movie that mm -hmm. she's promoting. What is it called? Absence of Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Congratulations. Fantastic. Whatever. The point is. <laughs> Apologies I mean, she, look, to Zoe Saldana. <laughs> she's got the, tr she, no, she's a legend because yes. she's in uh, Avatar. She's in Marvel. Yeah. She's in Star Trek. She's in Star Wars. Didn't she do something in Star Wars recently too? And she was in so. center stage. Somebody out there knows what that means. Yes. Yep. Yes. I'm watching 12 Monkeys and I, and I, and I just keep saying, Jody Sawyer. Jody Sawyer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So anyway, the point is. That makes me so happy. <laughs> she's doing great and we love her. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do love uh, her. <laughs> but then just after that, this, uh, somebody mentioned Alyssa Farah Griffin brought up Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And Saldana said something similar and noted that Paramount had just hired an, another screenwriter to pen a fourth script. Because, you know, Star Trek four is right around the corner, everybody. <laughs> just after the subject of another Star Trek movie in the works was raised, she asked Whoopi Goldberg, are you excited? And Whoopi says, maybe just a little. Then Joy Behar says, don't tip your hand yet. To which Whoopi says, what now? And Behar says, don't tip your hand yet. Don't tell them you got the job yet. Are they doing it? Is, do these guys, is this their first time working on a show where they don't know <laughs> that like they're being recorded? Yes. And then but, yeah, Whoopi continues and says, okay. And then Behar says, did you get the job? Saldana <laughs> says, for Star Trek? Oh my God. And Goldberg says, what is happening right now? I have yeah. no other work. I'm trying to get home to Sardinia. She lives in Sardinia. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And Griffin says, do you have it or don't you? And Whoopi says, I don't know. I'm like, okay, these guys are terrible at keeping secrets. <laughs> no, but but if you watch the clip, because mm. I watched the clip too, and this is how rumors get started. Yes. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg clearly has no clue what Joy Bear is talking about. Right. Mm. Like, wait, what? Huh? What? Yeah. I don't I don't have any work lined up at the moment. Mm. <laughs> and I mean, but, she, yeah. She could just be much better at keeping secrets than all the other uh, yeah. <laughs> right. gossipers. Well, they're like, you know, the thing you told me about, you yeah. tell them. And she's like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I signed an NDA, so I have no idea. They're like, you know, the mm -hmm. thing you you told us backstage, the Star Trek. Go ahead, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, she feigned ignorant very well. <laughs> she Good. it looked like she had no clue what she was right. talking about, and Joy was kind of. It seemed like she was trying to start rumors, but Zoe Saldana was excited by the thought of Whoopi Goldberg being in Star Trek Four, which yeah. I would be too. Oh my I god, think she right? Be in it because yeah. that would just be awesome. <laughs> yeah. And what is? I'm Definitely. sorry. What is Joy's connection to the new? The view. They're all on the view together. Right. Yeah. But she has no connection to no. Paramount or. Which, so by the just... way, was kind no. of the idea for the main viewer was the view. But nice. for Star Trek, that's what I said, nice. the main viewer. Nice. Little I known fact that. there. Yeah. Less fighting. And then little known <laughs> fact. Yeah. When I told <laughs> the name to Anne Marie, she goes, yeah, dude, me and somebody else. Made that joke at STLV, except we said the view screen. Was it the view mm -hmm. screen or something like that? So then I felt dumb because she's like, 
She's like, we made that joke months ago. You're late. Like, oh, oh I thought was I was being with, so clever. It was with um, Belky. Brie Belky. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I thought I was being so clever. And she's like, we already made a play on that like months ago. So tough. Anyway. Got my boards. You're very clever, Ryan. Very you. clever. You're welcome. But some people were clever first. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't take away from your cleverness. No. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I just feel like that the Whoopi story is a non-story, but I don't know. Yeah. Do Maybe. does it look like there was just joy stirring the pot, and yeah. Whoopi had no idea, or yeah. did they know? Because the second lady said, "Do you have the job or don't you?" As if she had heard something. Well, not too. no, because. Zoe Saldana asked, are you excited about Star Trek 4? As in, are you excited that there's a new movie coming right. out? Because and she likes Star Trek. Because she's exactly. a Star Trek fan. And that's what, what Whoopi was responding to. But Joy jumps in and says, don't tip your hand. As if, oh, you're going to be in it. Mm. And Whoopi's like, you know. And then, what? <laughs> and then Joy's like, don't tip your so hand. So you think that you think that they were just really putting Whoopi on the spot? <laughs> That's all I, I think. <laughs> oh, here goes JJ. He's like, it's, all right, what do I? <laughs> it's all just one big con. Oh! Uh, I didn't know we could go TOS. Um, I think it's option three. I think that Joy knows very little about Star Trek. And assumes that if there's a Star Trek movie, I know Whoopi's in Star Trek. Right. She right. must be in it. Right. Because Star Trek is Whoopi's show. And so That's, if they're making yeah. Star Trek 4, mm -hmm. I remember she was in Star Trek 3 a, a year or two ago. The Star Trek 3 Picard. Yeah. Uh, so she's probably <laughs> in this one. <laughs> right. All those space nerds came and right, they came out on right. the set. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. Professor X was on our show mm -hmm. yeah. telling us about yeah. it. It just, it seemed like everyone was on a different page when yeah. they were talking, having this conversation and they, it was not cohesive. I don't think it was a plan that will be, was going to be in Star Trek 4. Right. Although I think this is a good idea to make happen. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it'll get somebody thinking. Yeah, but it got me thinking, oh, this is how rumors start. <laughs> it really is, right? <laughs> it's exactly how rumors start. Mm -hmm. it's, it worked on me. Uh, I just looked up Zoe Saldana uh, with Star Wars, and that's what it was. It was, it was fans... Or, or articles surmising that she might go into Star Wars or how uh, cool, you know. Yeah. Was, that's why I was like, didn't I see something a while ago mm -hmm. that she's coming up and nope. But that's how these rumors start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so what do you guys at home think? The fans at home, everybody in the live chat, what do you think? Yeah. Is Whoopi gonna be in Star Trek 4? No, no, Star Trek 4 may never happen. Is Whoopi possibly being in discussions in some kind of talks to be in star mm. trek for this version of whatever the star trek four script is going to be or do you think it's all just it's just there's nothing there and people are just misinterpreting things well, and it was just bouncing around wrong ideas yeah it's um trek movie did surmise that towards the end of the art uh, article that um she may have confided in the women of the view about her uh, rundown that she was doing for Discovery. And that had, that oh, had yeah. that she had done pre before this airing of the view. And so, yeah, like JJ was saying. A rundown um, of Discovery, what do you mean? She did the, well, the, the, the recap the, video, she, yeah. she narrated it. Right. There was oh, a recap video that, that was, that was yeah, put out a couple of weeks great. ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You recapping the first it. four it's... seasons of discovery yeah could be yeah. that then when yeah like so a, a year and a half between seasons it's nice yeah. to have a recap yes <laughs> <laughs> seriously mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but yeah they were saying that could have been where the miscommunication came in and and like jj said 
Joy doesn't have a connection to Star Trek. So maybe that's what she thought they were talking about. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's less exciting. Well, I'll, I'll go on the, I'm going to say yes. She's definitely in it. And yeah. in fact, I think she is playing George Kirk. I think they're going to do a recast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something new and bold. Yeah. And they're, they're going to go with the script from two iterations ago. And yeah. they're just going to green light it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think okay. she is in it. And Chris Hemsworth is going to play Guinan. Yes. I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. he could pull it off. I think he has I a think great too. Yeah. yeah. The only thing he's going to pull off is his shirt. And he's okay. going to be a ripped Guinan. <laughs> hey. Remember in office. Thor, was it go. Thor Ragnarok where his his whole boojack was being shown? Yeah. yeah. Right? His yes. muscle bun. Yes, yes, I do I, seem I to recall that. I didn't hate that, that yes. scene <laughs> no. at all. <laughs> Melissa has that scene under her mattress right now. <laughs> there you go. If only I could figure out how to do that. <laughs> All right. So we're just about out of time. Just posters mm. of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but very quickly, a little preview into uh, Discovery Season 5, Episode 4. Mm -hmm. uh, the episode is called Face the Strange. We like strange. I like it when Star Trek goes strange. Mm -hmm. We do. And I love um, the David Bowie quote. Yes. But here's the interesting part. So the, the quote is um, from, uh, who is it? Okay, fine. Synopsis. On the way to the next clue, the USS Discovery is sabotaged by a mysterious weapon, leaving Captain Burnham, Rayner, and Stamets as the only crew members who could possibly save the ship in time. But here's the interesting part. Michelle Paradise called it mind bending and exciting and a heck of a lot of fun. Okay. Mm. What that tells me is it's going to be a weird ass episode and they're going to do, it's going to do like experimental stuff or stuff we haven't seen in Star Trek. Michael Burnham's going to be like on drugs again. Remember that episode where she was on drugs? She was like, <laughs> what's going on? You know, that was fun. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Something crazy like that. Right. What like the labyrinth and and there is going to be Bowie playing and and <laughs> right yeah that's yeah yeah strange stuff mm. going on but yeah, I wonder yeah. if the song will actually I wonder if they got the rights to that Bowie song it's gonna be that would be cool could be possible that would be awesome uh, now the pictures that they share don't really give us any information that's why I mean no it's really are, limited it's, eh yeah which means most of the episode is going to be in this zany kind of thing that they don't want to give away yet yeah this is yeah right, this feels you know. like cold open energy here mm -hmm. where, those are the only you're two not really pictures there's yes. a, yeah there's mm -hmm. there are a couple of more pictures maybe on a different site but it was just it, it's mm -hmm. just burnham and and rainer okay. almost just doing like 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 they look more like promotional pictures than Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's funny. Those recaps don't pop up in my searches. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> just strange. But and I saw them cool. earlier today and then I didn't see them again. Interesting. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. There's a story. Maybe somebody there. sent out the wrong ones. Hmm. Hmm. I uh I'm excited. I, I've I've been really enjoying this season of Discovery hmm. uh so far. I um and again it's one of those things where uh shame that shame that's going to be over in you know seven yeah. episodes mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, yeah um it's fun i feel like they're i don't know i feel like the show has finally found some character dynamics over the last couple of seasons that are really mm. working for it and yeah uh, and they're continuing to explore those yeah i really yeah. I really like the first three episodes i think that the mm -hmm. season's off to a great start um and yeah, of course, it's got to... to see them kind of stretching their legs. I'm so happy to see um, Callum Keith Rennie joining the show. That yeah. he's so great. He is great. Yes, so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Battlestar Galactica. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so good. Um, and uh, is he Canadian? Is he? I, I feel like he I think so. Yes. Everybody is. I'm practically. Everybody say that. Yeah. <laughs> Discovery in strange new worlds. Um, 
right? But <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that he's a he's a really great addition and to creates kind of a foil mm-hmm. where where there hasn't really been a foil like that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Not to be confused with Adonal Foyle, who played for the Golden State Warriors and before that in college played at nice. Colgate. Thank you. I was confused wow. for a second. Yeah. Adonal Warriors. Foyle. Yeah. Um. Very nice. <laughs> so let, let me point this out before we go, because we've got one more tweet to show off, everybody. <clears throat> it's from Jorg Hillebrand or Jorg or George. Slug Cola must it's like, really. It's, it's Jorg, taste... actually. Jorg? So, yeah. But Yerg. then there would be an oh, I guess with the double yeah he, dots there. He Yerg. specified okay, it at one point last year. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Sluggo Cola, no, perfect. Must really taste delicious after having been introduced in Star Trek: Deep Space Nine's Profit and Lace. It first reappeared in Picard's Disengage, then on Lower Decks, Parth Ferengi's Heart Place, yes. and now in Star Trek: Discovery's Janal. So Woo-hoo! that was fun. Mm-hmm. We do remember covering that and talking about yeah. that on uh, the seventh rule, I believe. Looks thick. Um, oh. it was. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, yeah. Let's talk about the week ahead before we get out of here, everybody, because oh, okay. Jenny's got to go to bed. She's got to watch <laughs> The Price Is Right and get her ass That's to bed. Right. <laughs> she never misses. She records it on her VCR. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I only a few days ago realized when I went, I did the prices right. Boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. I just did that for fun to myself. And I was like, <laughs> wait, that's literally their theme song, just an octave or two lower. It's the same. Totally. Like, da, 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 da. Boom, 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 boom. I, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize that either. That's... I never made that connection until I just sang it to myself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like three days ago. Amazing. I got in my backyard right there. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> So wow. the point is this week, yesterday on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel, we released our full review of what was it? Oh, Deja Q. Mm. Remember all the Q memes come from that episode. So we talk about that. I was really excited for Sirak. I was like, these are all Q memes. And he's like, I don't mess around on social media very much. So <laughs> I, I don't care. And I'm like, True but enough. this one and that mm. one and this and the the you know when he's on the, with the poncho no okay anyway <laughs> jj knows he's like yeah the, the mariachi yeah, band. we love that i got it all yeah. mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he or when really he tells naked. Worf, eat any good books lately you know yeah yeah i think uh, okay. the writers back then were like this is going to be such a memeable episode yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. wait to see <laughs> yeah. five years from now there's going to be some people that make memes they're going to love it what's a meme <laughs> your kids are going to love um, yeah, that's right. Back to the future. Wow. So then on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Falling Tower YouTube channel, we've got our review of, remember, this is April, so it's all new shows. Three Body Problem, mm. not to be confused by Three Dog Night. Nice. It's a band. Three doors down. Yeah. Uh, Three Doors mm-hmm. Down. Thank you very much. Three Body Problem on Netflix with Dr. Chuck Adler. That's Professor Chuck Adler and myself and Dr. Muhammad Noor review that. Did we like it? Did we love it? He's a physicist, by the way. We had to bring on a physicist. Nice. Because it, this is wow. a big physics kind of show. So you're going to love that, I think. Then on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th Rule YouTube channel, we've got our full review of Discovery Season 5, Episode 4, the aforementioned. Did we like it? Did we love it? We'll find out soon. And then on Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here on the Virtual TrekCon channel, we've got Star Trek and chill. We talk about Star Trek sometimes, but we chill all the time. Yeah. Then on Sunday on the 7th Rule YouTube channel, at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our first segment review of the Next Generation episode, Allegiance. Tons of aliens in that episode. So we had to bring in Michael Westmore to talk about it. Great stuff because there's so many aliens. He was nominated for an Emmy mm-hmm. uh, for that episode, for his work on that episode. And uh, the Rector brothers are there. 
which is a lot of fun. There are those two <laughs> aliens that are unnamed. Yes, I anyway. love those aliens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want their costumes. I know, they're awesome. <laughs> they're they are skin skin ass oh, yeah. tight. Mm -hmm. those costumes. And they wear them well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do they do? <laughs> All right. So JJ Lendl, the point is, where can yes. people find you and your works online? Uh, you can find me uh, here in this basement, but you can find my works <laughs> uh, at jjlendl.com. Uh, and you can find me on uh, social media at JJ Lendl at uh, yeah. all of the familiar places. Yes, there's the website. You can check out my portfolio, which is in need of updating. You can oh. check out the shop. I just added, and they may have already sold out, but oh, it looks so good. Got, in the mail. got the new uh, Star Trek uh, issue 19 that I did uh, some cover art for. This is the start of a six issue art where I did a connecting. Uh, oh, cool. Oh, right. Connecting, yeah. Uh, church window stained glass. So, oh, so fantastic. I'll have more of those in the pipeline. Uh, but yeah, mm. you know, follow me on social mm. media and, uh, you know, when I do stuff, I usually post on there, uh, without too much delay. Uh, but I may be a little dark next month with the new baby coming. So, mm. uh, but understandable. Yes. understandable. Yes. <laughs> yes. See what I can, we'll see what I can eke out over those first couple of weeks. But, hey, congratulations uh, too. Mm -hmm. We're so excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> That's awesome. Covered in, in vomit and yeah oh. stuff i obviously oh. can't wait it's yeah. gonna be <laughs> <laughs> can't wait for the vomit yes <laughs> fixer didn't happen what about you jenny r johnson where can people find you online well you can find me um directly through my website jenny r johnson.com uh, my shop is there um you can find you can find all kinds of stuff about me there um, but you can also uh, find me on social media. Oh, oh thank you. Um, yeah, and I'm working on this uh, painting right now, and I'm updating it on, on, on all my socials. Um, I am... My God, that's a painting. That's it's unbelievable. Crazy. And it's... Yeah, it's very... It's, they're wow, that small. ruler looks perfect. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even do the back, background. Yeah, Jenny. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, you, you can find me um, at Jenny R. Johnson Art everywhere except for Twitter, where I am Jenny R. Johnson. And I'm painting with a brush the size of my, I don't know, like Eyelash. a single strain of hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's a lot. Melissa Longo, what about yourself? Um, well, on um, social media at Melissa or Melissa Longo, M-A-L-I-S-S-A. That's your name, yeah. Yes. <laughs> on um the introvertedrepublic.com at walking art made by Melissa. Mm. I just added a new page, um, Dancing Goddess collection in and the dancing goddess says print, prints. So Yay. yeah. Oh cool. Love it. Thanks. That's awesome. But also walking art made by Melissa on Patreon. Because I'm also writing a story, and a new chapter should be dropping any day. Ooh, cool! Another one. <laughs> one last week. One. Yeah, week I was gonna one. say that was like, yeah. I know. I know. I had a spurt, a burst. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and Aww. my cat Mochi, who is <laughs> Mochi, <laughs> is the cutest little thing ever. A little pink nose. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's so cute. And when she stretches, I just want to eat her up because she's mm -hmm. so cute. <laughs> That's disgusting, Melissa. You're not supposed she's to eat the cat. So Barbarian. cute. <laughs> I don't actually want to eat her, but oh. <laughs> she makes me squeak. <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> All right, everybody. You can find me online on uh, Twitter.com. That's at Ryan TG Husk. Once again, that's at Ryan TG Husk. Or just Falling Tower, Virtual TrekCon, or The Seventh Rule on your favorite social media. But especially right here on the YouTube, everybody. So go Yay! to the YouTube.com. I bet you Yay! there is a the YouTube.com mm -hmm. for the YouTube. old people. 
<laughs> and they just stare at like it's like it's like those old screensavers of like fish going by or oh that that geometric yeah. ball square that bounces around yes. <laughs> hit the corner that's the they're like <laughs> i was watching the youtube for 45 minutes today <laughs> It was Aww. interesting. I see what you like in it. This is very in anyway. Aww. That's it, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, yeah. We hope to see you again real soon. And hey, when you want to talk about Whoopi Goldberg being Whoopsie Goldberg and letting the cat out of the bag, <laughs> put it on. The Can you believe I just thought of that? That was Magic. really good. Oh boy, yeah. so good. Okay, put it on. You the main are door. so good. <laughs> <laughs> it should be 